remember the man that was killed by the two students of the Puara State Polytechnic. I discovered that this man was also a pastor. He was a pastor with the Winners Chapel, the Living Faith Church. He was also a married man with three children. The first daughter is a medical doctor. Sit back and enjoy this very revealing story about this man. Hello guys, do you remember the man that was killed by the two students of the Aquara State Polytechnic? And they were being parated recently by the Nanjian police. Yeah. Um, one of the things you notice that throughout the circulation of that news, there is no picture of the man that was being killed. Did you notice that? All right, so I, I was actually interested because I wanted to know. All they were saying is that the man is a socialite, the man is a club owner, hotel manager, and all of that. And I was curious, like I needed to know who was this man. I just needed to see his face. And in my nature, I went investigating, I went digging, and I was able to land on the page of the man on Facebook. This is a man's Facebook account. All right. Okay, interestingly, while going through the page of the man, I discovered that this man is also, or this man was also a pastor. Yes, you heard that right. He was a pastor with the Winners Chapel, the Living Faith Church. Okay, I'll bring my proof to that as we are going into the video. One of the things I noticed about this man is that this man is one of the key players in the hospitality industry of the Quara State because he seems to manage a chain of different brand of hotels. That's what you notice when you visit this page. From his timeline, I noticed that his father is alive, his mom is alive, and he recently celebrated his birthday in June this year. And his mom is also an August baby. So they both celebrated their birthday recently. And he's also a married man with at least three or four children. Three children. <clears throat> the first daughter is almost the age of this small girl that he was having this affair with. And then the first daughter is equally a medical doctor. She actually swan the medical oath recently. He's also there on the timeline. This man is well to do. From the information we can find online, he inherited most of the father's businesses and investment, which were particularly hotels and clubs. And you know, obviously, the father that was doing hotel business at that time, obviously, it won't be the same with this time. So he came in, modernized the process, upgraded the business, and added up a lot of new innovation infrastructure into the business for sustainability. So when this whole thing started, they didn't really know the people that were behind the killing. His friends and his classmates raised alarm earlier that several men got into his hotel room and killed him and left. That was the narrative that was being spread initially. It was later that the police now uncovered that this girl, these two girls were actually the one that killed this man. All right, let's get back to the initial claim I made at the infant stage of this video that the man who was killed by the Quarrasta student was actually a pastor with Winners Chapel the Living Faith Church. I went to the man's page and I found this picture of him when he was actually ordained into ministry by the church. Now the person at the extreme there is the man, circle with the red line. That's the man. And if that is not enough to convince you, I also found a flyer where he posted and invited his friends on Facebook to his church. You can find it here too. And if that is still not enough to convince you, I went through comments on his post and I found several places where people addressed him as pastor. The other one called him daddy, which is the common name he used to address pastors in churches in Nigeria. Look at this, pastor. Look at this, pastor. See another one here, pastor. So you see, it is obvious this man was a pastor, not just any pastor, a pastor that was saving and a pastor that had people who recognizes him as a pastor. Going through this man's timeline, I actually felt bad. Because when you go through this man's timeline, you find out that you have this feeling that this man is a very religious person. He's a very devoted Christian. He joins online streaming for prayers. He shares scripture almost every day, messages, prophecy. And I even found this video on his timeline.
this is a video that is preaching about eternal life, sin, and death. That for a man that sinned, as the Bible said, definitely this is where you end up with. So, guys, I, I, I was very disturbed when I got to this man's timeline. A lot of us Christians, we hear the word of God. Some of us, we preach the word of God, but we do not practice it. Because it still beat my imagination how this man was sharing all these messages. Not just having fun, like, I don't want to mention the name. Not just having it with a young girl, but was going to that extreme of giving himself to be tied up by little girls. I'm very sure the wife would be so embarrassed, like she may not even believe that her husband would get involved in this kind of stuff. It doesn't tell well of him as a religious leader, so to say. I'm not trying to be judgmental, but there are certain things that are expected of certain people. To the rank of a pastor, even if you're not a pastor, to the rank of a church leader, a church elder, I know that a lot of messes are happening in the church. A young girl told me how a job was advertised in a church. And then they mentioned in the church that if you're interested, meet so 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 person. Like when the announcement was done at the end of the service, so they said, if you're interested, meet so 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 And this man is an elder in the church. And guess what? He gave this young lady an appointment to come to the office. And when this young lady went, he tried to force himself on the young lady. A church elder in the same church, in the same congregation, under the same roof. And as the young girl didn't accept, he gave her time to think about it, gave back to him that they can book an appointment if she really wants the job. A job that was advertised in the church. See, I'm not trying to sound like a saint here, but a lot of messes are happening in the church. If, if you're a member of that manager, would you believe that your pastor can get himself involved in that kind of a thing? Not just normal cheating, adultery, no. Going in, like going into something very weird and crazy. Very weird and crazy. And this is a pastor in the church. Even if he's not the main pastor, even if he's an assistant pastor, this is a pastor in the church. There are some things you restrict yourself from when you are occupying some certain offices, when you are bearing some certain responsibilities. I thought about when I found this man page, I went through it, I saw the thing that he was posting, and I'm very sure he wasn't doing these things. He wasn't doing those things. It's sad that he had to die in such a disgraceful way. A pastor. A church leader. Well, I'm not a judge. I'm not trying to be judgmental, but God is a judge. I hope, I hope he find peace with God, and I hope he makes heaven. But that death was too disgraceful for a pastor.